so welcome to my talk about Babeshka tasks. Uh, I'm Michiel Borkent from the Netherlands. Uh, in the background, you see my city called Amersfoort. It's a nice, uh, not so big city near Amsterdam. Uh, uh, I enjoy living there. Uh, I'm Bork dude on the internet. You can find me if you Google for that name or DuckDuckGo for that name. <laughs> um, and uh, so what is Babeshka? If you don't know it yet, uh, it's a scripting tool for Clojure and it's compiled to native. Uh, so there is a single standalone binary uh, and you don't need a JVM to run it. Uh, it has fast startup time and you can execute a subset of Closure. Uh, it's a pretty large subset. Uh, only some things are not supported, like uh, dev type, for example, is one thing that is not supported. But a lot, a lot of things are supported, like protocols and multi methods and advanced features like that. Um, so it has a couple of limitations, uh, but it's intended to uh, replace. Bash scripts, basically, and that's why it call, it's called Babeshka. Uh, so the idea is that in Clojure projects, we we uh, have deps.eden and we have this nice uh, Clojure CLI, uh, and we have Clojure script compiler uh, tools like Shadow CLJS. But in many projects, we still write, uh, yeah, non-trivial lines of Bash. Uh, and Babeshka tries to take that place also uh, with a fast starting binary that you can replace uh, your uh, Bash scripts with. Uh, it's been in development for almost two years um, uh, and uh, it's available for every major operating system like Mac OS, uh, Linux and Windows. So that's Babeshka in a nutshell. Uh, and what I noticed in when I created Babeshka, uh, and especially in the, in the last few months, I noticed that people have started replacing their Bash scripts with Clojure. And of course, this is your own choice. If you like Bash and you're a, a fan of Bash, keep using it. Uh, that there's, there's nothing wrong with it, but usually after five lines of bash, uh, I get a uh, little bit frustrated. So that's why I prefer closure. But I still see uh, many closure projects uh, with which use tools like make and uh, also more recently just and npm scripts, uh, like things like this um, for a couple of reasons, I think. I have investigated these projects and uh, I made a list of reasons why people have this beyond their closure tooling in their projects. And I think the number one reason is uh, just to remember complex project specific CLI invocations. Um, um, so yeah, you can put these in the readme and then say, well, here is how you build my thing. But usually you want to have this in a script. And sometimes people use make files just to, to, to remember these invocations. Uh, what's also nice about make is that you can just give a name to, to a longer invocation. So it's more like an alias or a shortcut uh, for these invocations. Uh, yeah, what also is one nice thing about these make or just tools is that you have discoverability. So a newcomer arrives at your, your uh, open source project or company project, and then you just type, uh, I don't know what, what's the discovery to, uh, thing for make, but you, you just look at the make file and then you see all the things that are important to do with your project. Like, oh, you can do make dev to start a dev environment, or you can do make build to build an UBJ or whatever. Um, and what what is less often used, but I think that is the power feature of Make, which is essentially a C build tool, is uh, that it supports only rebuilding when necessary. Uh, I think uh, almost 
or maybe 90% of, of the things I see uh, with make and closure projects is uh, that all these tasks are phony. And that is a way of saying, uh, I don't uh, want to make, uh, always just build this thing without uh, looking if it's uh, necessary to build something. It's just, uh, it's just an alias for a task basically. Uh, but make do does have this feature uh, and sometimes it is used, but I don't haven't seen that a lot in, in closure projects. But uh, make and just uh, couple their syntax still to something which is very similar to bash, I think. Uh, and personally, I think it's nice to have something like closure as well in these environments. And not only because closure is a better language, but just to not have this context switch uh, when you work on your closure backend and your closure front end, you also want to do the scripting in the same language. So you don't have to think about, uh, oh, how do I make a local var variable in this language or function or whatever. Um, so it's not only a matter of which is better, but just the cognitive, cognitive overhead, uh, which we deal with on a day, day by day basis. Um, so since version 4 of uh, what, 040 <laughs> of Babeshka, uh, uh, we have a feature called tasks, uh, which is similar to, to which fulfills most of the bullet points that I showed in the previous slide. Uh, so here is one example. And this, this, is, uh, this configuration is Eden. And it should go in a file called bb.eden in your project. Um, and what you can do is very similar to what you can do in Debs Eden. Um, so you can say, I have some paths where, where my scripts uh, live. So this is the, the Babeshka class path. Uh, but you can also say, uh, I want to uh, have some dependencies in my uh, project, Babeshka project. Uh, and Medley is a, a library with some helper functions, which all run uh, well within Babeshka. Uh, so you're able to use these. It's, it's just an example. Um, and you can say, well, this is the minimum Babeshka version uh, that you can uh, use for this Babeshka scripting project. And then finally, you can have a tasks uh, key where the, the task runner will look for uh, names of tasks you can run. So here is a very simple, or I should say basic enclosure uh, and language. Uh, here is a very basic task, which is called clean. Um, and uh, what it does, it shells out and calls the, the RM uh, uh, function, or how, sh how should I say it? Uh, the RM Unix utility. Uh, and to remove the target folder. Well, this is a very trivial example, uh, but just to, to give you an initial impression. Um, so shell is a special function within the tasks uh, world. It, it comes from a namespace called Babeshka tasks. Uh, and it's also usable for, from other places, uh, but it's automatically imported for you uh, because you need it so often in tasks. Uh, and you can invoke then uh, this task from the command line by saying bb run clean or even shorter, just bb clean. Um, so if there are any questions uh, during the talk, uh, well, maybe I'm happy to, to take them, um, but uh, I can also do that at the end. Um, I don't mind. Um, Okay, but uh, maybe, uh, yeah, I don't know. Let's, let's I'll, I'll just, uh, just notify me if you have some question. If it's not on topic, I will save it to the end. <laughs> um, so yeah, you can use any Babeshka compatible library uh, within uh, these tasks. So Babeshka compatible means either it's built into Babeshka or it's an external library like the Medley library I just uh, showed on the previous slide. 
so here, um, Babeshka is uh, has a library called Babeshka FS, which is a file system library, and it has a function called delete tree, uh, which does basically the same as R RM minus RF. Uh, but now suddenly your task became um, cro uh, cross-platform. So we don't depend on this Unix utility anymore, but now anyone also on Windows can use this uh, task to, to, to clean the build. Um, so because it's an Eden file, uh, the expressions you write have to be Eden compatible, but beyond that, you can put pretty much anything in these tasks. Uh, you don't have to put a lot of code in there. You can uh, load files from other pla places if you want uh, and use uh, a require and whatever to, to, to run a function from, an, from another namespace. That, that's fine, but um, you can choose how you want to do this. Uh, so I can add a print line here and then I can say, BB clean and then it will print removing target folder because I put this print line here. Um, so this run function that I showed here, uh, it's optional, but usually you don't have to explicitly say run, but if you do, then it has a couple of options you can use, which are not used that often, but they are there when you need them. Uh, and one of them is called parallel. So here I have a, I will explain the parallel option later in more detail, but uh, so, but the gist of it is if you have one task D and this calls another task uh, C using the run uh, built-in function, the, and this one depends on A and B. If you then call run with parallel, these two dependencies are, are not, uh, are not, uh, uh, they can be run independently. Uh, so they will be run at the same time. As you can see, when I type BB run parallel D, then you can see that uh, A and B run more or less at the same time instead of uh, first A and then B. So that's what the parallel option is. And I will get back to this later in the talk. Um, so there is another option for run. Um, I'm not looking at the chat, by the way. So if there is any anything I should react to, then please let me know. Uh, I will just uh, focus on my uh, presentation. Um, okay, so the, the run option also accepts another op, uh, option called PRN. Uh, so normally when you have a script in Babeshka, the last value uh, will be printed, um, which is, uh, which tasks do not do this. So, uh, and that has a reason because uh, the task uh, has a return value that you, that you can reuse in other tasks. So that's why uh, the value is not printed, but you should do this explicitly if you want to see the return value on the command line. And that's why we have the PRN option. So, so this task calculates uh, one, two, and three as a sum. And then I run it from the command line and that prints six. So that's the PRN option. Mm. So we have a couple of hooks in the tasks uh, configuration. Um, and one of them is called init. And in it is used to define some helper functions and constants. So you can say tasks, and then I have in it. Well, here I define a function env, which gets an environment variable. Uh, and I can use that in any of my tasks. So here I have only one task. And I here I call the env function that I defined in my init uh, hook. Um, and then I will just print the first command line argument as a, a system uh, uh, environment variable. So I invoke BB, I, first I set uh, in bash, I set foo to one. 
then I invoke BB with print and the task here. And then I print the value of the environment variable foo. So that will print one. OK, so that's the init hook. You can just set up some, some helper functions for your tasks. Uh, we also have enter and leave, um, which are usually log, uh, used for logging, um, which give you a way to, to print something before or after the, uh, each task. Um, so you can say, uh, well, there is a special function called current task, which returns a hash map of, uh, it has the name of the currently running task. Um, so if I define a ent enter hook, and I say entering, and then I print the name of the current task, and I invoke the previous example from the previous slide, then it first prints entering print and then it prints the, the one. And the leave uh, is pretty much the same, but then at the end of each task. Mm. So what about command line arguments? Um, Babeshka tasks doesn't have an opinion on this. Uh, you can just parse the command line arguments however you like using closure tools CLI, which is built into Babeshka or just do your own uh, processing on it. So it, it's you're really free. Uh, there is not any uh, processing of this. Um, but sometimes you want to be able to first uh execute a task with certain command line arguments and then invoke another task using maybe some of the command line arguments and the first one left out or something um, and that is uh you can do that by just using binding on the command line arg arguments and then pass it some other command line arguments so here we just uh leave out the first one and then we run the task bar so bar will see uh, all but the first command line arguments so that here is a helper function called print arguments which prints the command line arguments as the task uh, sees it and um, so uh, yeah you can you just use binding for this to to set command line arguments for other other tasks it, and that's nice because bar you can still invoke bar itself from the command line as well as an independent task, uh, and it you will still it will still behave the way you uh, expect probably. Um, so tasks also have some local options. So each task can have their own options. Um, and if you want to use that, then you should move the, the expression uh, to, a, to a, a value in the map uh, under the task key. And what you can do then is add a doc string to your uh, task. Uh, well, this is the clean task. And what it does, it removes the target folder. And I need the Babeshka FS library here. So I can also locally require some namespaces only for one task. Um, and then you can set up an alias and then you can use that in the expression. Um, so tasks, uh, apart from these options, tasks also uh, take uh, extra paths and extra depths uh, options to, to load libraries just for one task. Um, and if you use, uh, if you have dependencies between tasks, then all these libraries are loaded uh, as needed uh, at the beginning. Um, and you can also override the enter and leave um, uh, hooks just locally for one task. So if you want to disable the logging or something, um, for just for one task, you can do that or print something different. So now about uh, the discoverability. So if, if you have all these tasks in your BB Eden file, uh, you can then run BB tasks from the command line and then it will print uh, the names and the doc strings of the tasks. Um, so that really helps uh, to get an overview uh, for 
yeah, when you come back after two months to, to a project or something, uh, you can see what is going on here. And this is a real example from a closure, uh, sorry, Sale Condo LSP project, which is a LSP server for only for uh, uh, Sale Condo, which you can install as a Visual Studio plugin, but it, it, some people also use it from um, IntelliJ. Uh, so to build this, I have to execute all these steps. And uh, I, I will show this example later, but uh, so this is the overview that you will get if you have multiple tasks. And the tasks are always printed in the order that you have them in the task uh, file. And you might wonder, well, uh, hash maps don't have a defined order, but uh, yeah, we have a trick to make that work uh, because we use uh, rewrite CLJ to analyze this BB Eden file. So, so we can just preserve the order of this. So that's fine. Um, okay, so some uh, about the API, I already mentioned run and I already mentioned shell, um, but I didn't mention the built-in closure function. Um, so here I have a, yeah, a dummy a BB Eden. It doesn't do anything. Uh, or yeah, it, it does. So let, let's just look at, start at this, this task. Uh, it, it says Uber jar clean. Um, and it first invokes the clean task, which we already had uh, before. And then it invokes the, the UbiJar task. And it does this uh, using the closure built-in function. Um, uh, what this does, it, it runs, uh, it uh, runs uh, tools. It, yeah, it runs a Java process uh, with dependencies uh, from your depths Eden resolve etc like like the normal closure CLI does but this is all built into Babeshka itself so you don't have to install uh, the closure CLI uh, separately uh, for example on CI or uh, you don't have to install this because it, it's already built into a Babeshka so there is no PowerShell or bash, bash script or, uh, named closure needed to, to install to be able to run this. Uh, you can, of course, shell out to the closure CLI, but then you, you, you're you going to uh, use the shell function. But you don't, you don't have to because uh, Babeshka already, already has this uh, logic built into it. Um, so yeah, that's an example of the closure function. Um, so the shell function I already mentioned, um, and usually in bash scripts, uh, usually people set uh, an option to fail if one of the subcommands uh, fail, right? Uh, set uh, minus E, O, pipe fail or something. Uh, but I think that is the behavior you usually want by default. And that is why the shell uh, built-in function also uh, throws an exception when when this uh, sub, when this command uh, doesn't return with a zero exit code. Um, so when I invoke this task, bbls, uh, it's, well, ls prints no such file or directory, and then Babeshka prints uh, error while executing task ls. And so, and then Babeshka ends, and the error, to, error code is the same as the shell uh, returned. Uh, and, but if you have, if, if there were any other steps in the process, then they would not run because this shell command failed. Um, but if you don't want this, sometimes there are cases that you, for example, uh, maybe uh, your closure formatting tool or something didn't work, but you don't want to crash the build because of that. Uh, or maybe the linter returns errors, but you, you don't care. <laughs> Uh, you can say, uh, okay, just continue whatever happens uh, after this, and then uh, Babeshka will just ignore the, the exit value, and then uh, oh, it just works as as if it succeeded. Um, 
shell has some other options like out you can uh, you can write the output directly to a file for example uh, and it supports most of the options or all of the options actually that are that you can pass to babeshka process uh, which uh, the process function has a lot of these uh, options for example um, um, uh, if, if you should uh, write, well, by default, the, the output is uh, directly written to the console and not like close your Java shell that it's uh, written to a string, but you can say, I want out uh, to be a string. And then this entire expression will return a hash map with uh, where out is written to a string, for example. So that, but that's all part of this Babeshka process. Uh, uh, library or that's already included in Babeshka. Um, so let's talk about uh, dependencies between tasks uh, because that that's also something that make offers that you might want to have. Uh, so let's start at the bottom uh, and this is actually a, yeah a dummy example. It doesn't really create an uber jar and it doesn't really create a jar. It just prints something but just imagine that this would make a, an uber jar and to make an uber jar we need a jar so we say uh, this uh, task depends on this task and that task is over here uh, and when this task uh, has completed then we print i'm creating an uber jar uh, and then you would probably uh, run the closure function to do that uh, but yeah, so let's go here and this jar uh, task, it depends on minus target and minus jar file. And when we go there, um, we see that uh, the minus target uh, depends on minus target dir, which is just a string. So it's basically just a constant. Uh, but the, the nice thing is that we can uh, so this task basically just returns this string. Uh, but now in this minus target, we can reuse this value, which is bound to this uh, string return value. So uh, we can do something with it, like uh, create a, a directory. So the FS library has a create dirs function, uh, which is similar to uh, make dir minus p. Uh, so if the directory already exists, it does nothing. And if it, if it doesn't exist, it creates it and all its uh, parent directories. So, um, but, uh, but you can reuse the values from task, other tasks that you depend on. That's the idea. Um, so here we have the jar and it depended on targets and this function re actually returns uh, the this value, but we I, we don't really use it here. But you could, I, I suppose, that you would want to write the jar to the target directory. Um, and then we also depend on minus oh, minus jar file, uh, and uh, it 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 just returns a string. Um, and this file is actually used. So now is the interesting bit here uh, because make supports only rebuilding when necessary. Uh, but in tasks, we just supported this through a function by adding a function to the FS library, uh, which is called modified sins. And this function actually came from uh, another project, uh, which is called Mach. Uh, which uh, it was made by Juxt uh, to replace also make with closure. But this project is no longer uh, active. And I also spoke with the, the authors while making Babeska tasks uh, about certain features. And uh, I studied Mach. And uh, so I, one of the features I really liked was this modified since uh, function, which I then include it in Babeshka FS, but you can just use it from tasks as well. Um, so what it does, uh, you give it an anchor 
so here is the jar file anchor, and then you give it some list of other files and the, the fs glob function will search uh, the source directory for uh, recursively for all the closure files here. And if any of the closure files is newer uh, or modified since uh, this jar file, then uh, we get a list of all the modified files. And if that is not empty, uh, then, well, here. Here is the logic to, to produce this jar, which now it's just a spit, but imagine some closure invocation to make this jar. So this is how you can save time by only rebuilding uh, when your, your build actually needs to do something. So, um, okay, uh, this is another uh, dependencies example, uh, which is really a fun example uh, about making coffee. Uh, but it just shows that the parallel option can be a lot, can speed up your build a lot uh, if you have many things that can run independently. So um, this goes from top to bottom. Um, so the coffee P, uh, I don't know why it's a P, but I, uh, someone had a make file that uh, had this example to show that make in, running make in parallel was faster than C. So I just he, he basically copied this uh, and translated it to to uh, um, uh, to Babeshka tasks. Uh, Graz father is his name. Maybe he's, he's uh, also here. I don't know. Um, that's his nickname. So uh, what it does? So this coffee pea task depends on ground grounding the beans, and uh, I need some hot water, and I need to filter. Uh, I need a coffee filter and a mug, and all these things have thread sleeps in, uh, in them. Um, uh, well, yeah, so if you run that with just coffee, uh, oh, the P is probably for parallel. <laughs> uh, so if you run this uh, without the parallel option, it takes uh, almost 1200 milliseconds. And when you run it with the parallel option, it takes about half of the time. Um, so that's just a fun example, but I actually also am using this in the unit tests of the Babeshka uh, project to, to test the parallel option. Um, what's also useful about the parallel option is that you can uh, use it to, during development. I'm actually using this at, at work for my development environment to, to run three uh, tools at the same time in parallel. Uh, so I have one dev task. Uh, and what I didn't tell you is that uh, the minus tasks, those are considered uh, private. So if you type Babeshka tasks from the command line, then these minus tasks won't be printed. They will just be uh, considered as a helper task thing. So, so this dev task, it uh, invokes this minus dev task, uh, but with the parallel option. And that is just because I just can type BB dev from the command line and I don't have to type the parallel flag man manually. Uh, so this minus dev uh, task, it depends on dev colon sales.js, dev colon less and dev backend. So closure script, less compilation and a backend REPL uh, CIDR uh, REPL process. Uh, and when I, so when I invoke this in parallel, so these three things are not dependent on each other. So they will run in parallel and then this will wait uh, for these things to finish. So if either of these three crashes, then the entire Babeshka process uh, crashes or uh, uh, quits. It will not wait for all the three to finish. Um, so if my closure script compilation, uh, uh, yeah, exits with a non-zero exit code, then my dev process goes down. Uh, in practice, I haven't experienced this yet, but um, uh, so and but if everything, yeah, uh, so I can just. Um, 
just uh, do closure script and less and, and backend development all at the same time, just by running one command on the command line, BB dev. So that's, that's what I'm using at work. Uh, I think some people used something like, I can't remember the name, some, some Ruby tool or something to run things in parallel, but you can do that now with BB uh, tasks as well. Um, I wasn't it for men or something. Uh, yeah, I think so. Um, so yeah, one of the things that, that was uh, popular before or the way to, to accomplish more, more or less something like tasks before the, this existed was uh, you had a namespace with a main function. And then you set uh, Babeshka minus M and then the main uh, namespace and then it would execute this uh, function. But you can also do that directly from, from tasks. Then you say, well, I have a task called foo bar, foo minus bar. And then uh, here is the name, main function. Uh, so if you will just put a namespace there, it will automatically call the, the main function with uh, the command line arguments. And you can also choose another function. It doesn't have to be the minus main function from that namespace. You can choose any function there. So that's just a shortcut. Okay, let's let's go to a real example to to almost finish this talk. Um, I I was really glad that I let's see. Yeah, okay, I'm all, almost done. Uh, I was really glad that I had uh, this tasks feature when I, um, uh, yeah, it made publishing some of my projects a lot, a lot easier. Uh, so before tasks, I had this, uh, this project, uh, Sales Condo LSP, which produces this, uh, this VS code plugin for Sales Condo. Um, and uh, I had to do a lot of manual steps. Uh, and uh, I wanted to automate all these steps, but they depended all on each other. So this was a really good fit for the task runner. So let me just start at the end. Um, so we have BB publish. And what this task does, it publishes everything needed for a new release based on a new release of CLJ Condo. So it has the upload jar task, which, uh, so if I go to the CLJ Condo project uh, releases, there is, um, yeah, oh, um, you, you can see here CLJ Condo LSP server with a date, which is the, the version of CLJ Condo and then standalone jar. And you can download this and then run in IntelliJ as the, linting uh, LSP server. You can have many, you can have different LSP servers for different features, but this one only provides linting because this is CLT condo. So that's the thing that uh, gets uploaded here. But first we have to create this thing, of course. So how do we create this thing? We have to build something, uh, but also we have to upload uh, VS code, the VS code plugin, which you see here. Uh, which entails some, some JavaScript compilation and things like this. And we also have OVSX published, which is similar to VS Code. It's just an open source format, which is uh, compatible with this VS Code plugin uh, system. So it's sim similar. So these two are uh, similar. I, I will just focus on the VS Code uh, published thing and the upload jar. Let's forget about this one. So upload jar, what do we need? Let's see. Okay, up to upload jar. Um, yeah, okay, so we need, so it that uploads this thing, okay? Uh, so we need a recent CLJ condo version because we need this in the file name and Oh, no, no, sorry. We need uh, this version thing. We need it to decide where to upload it. So because this step really uploads it to this really GitHub release with this version number. 
So that's all automated. I, I ju can just type BB publish, and then this happens all automatically. Um, so that's what this step does. And there is, uh, I made a script, uh, which is a Babeshka compatible library to upload this to GitHub releases. And that's in my depths, of course. So uh, my depths has this uh, thing. Let's see, that's from here. So this is just a Babeshka script as a library and it uploads things to GitHub releases. And it has all kinds of uh, nice stuff like it sets the right content uh, or mime type and uh, if the release already exists, it will just uh, replace the existing uh, artifact. And if it doesn't exist, it will create one and things like this. Um, so that's what this library does. And I'm using that here to upload this LSP jar file to this GitHub release. Okay. But this depends on reason Salesia condo, which is also uh, a task. So recent sales condo is a task. And what it does, it detects the most recent sales condo version from closures. Uh, so it will just, it will do a uh, HTTP request to this closures API. And then it will see, okay, uh, we have the latest release and that's the return value of this task here. I can show you that what it returns. So it, it's, it has a bunch of JSON, and then you can say, uh, you can see, oh yeah, it's, I want the last stable uh, release. I'm not sure if, I, I probably figured it out somewhere. Yeah, okay. Latest release, okay, let's, latest release. Oh, yeah, okay, so this is the, not a uh, snapshot, but just uh, the, most recent non non snapshot release. Okay, so that's what happens there. Uh, so this task, this value is yeah. You can invoke it from the command line, of course. So let me just uh, go over there. Sp, and if I do bb uh, reason sales icon, I also have set up some auto completion in my. Uh, Bash uh, setup, so I can just type tab, and then you have the the task name completed. And and I did some logging. Uh, so this this is the beef, uh, the the enter uh, hook, and this is the leave hook, which does some logging of uh, what task get executed. But I actually want to see the value of of this task, so I use run prn. Now you can see, oh yeah, it's, it, this is the latest release, okay? So it, this is also how you can debug some, some, of, the, some of the tasks from the, the command line. So uh, let's go back here, LSP jar, uh, upload jar. We have this recent sales condo and then LSP jar and this LSP jar task then uh, does some renaming of, of a previous file that was built it, or, or yeah. It does, it copies an existing jar to another location using the FS uh, library. Uh, and that is the actual minus jar file. Uh, and let's see, build server, I think produces this one. And there I use the FS modified since thing to skip building the Uber jar if, if it's not really necessary. Usually you, you will also uh, add depths Eden here because if one of your dependencies changes, you also want to do a rebuild probably, but uh, you can figure that out. Um, and I call, I call uh, when I built this server, I call uh, shell and I just call lining in here because I'm still use, uh, building this with lining and I have imported it to uh, depths Eden. It worked fine because uh, the UbiJar stuff really works well with Lightning. And uh, uh, now there is also another tool called Tools Build for Depths Eden, which can do this. And there is Depth Star for Depths Eden. But uh, 
this just worked and I, there was no reason for me to change this. So I called to Leiningen, uh, but I set the shell function to this dir uh, option I set to server. So this Leiningen command is executed within directory server. So normally I would, would do this, say CD server and then line uh, yada, 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 and then copy that and this and that. Or, uh, but now it's all nice uh, within task. So, so it's possible for me to build the server just on the command line if I want to only test that build, uh, build step. But uh, it depends on Java 1.8. And that's what I say here. I, I must use Java 1.8. So this task asserts that we are using Java 1.8. It doesn't actually install Java 1.8. So I found that a little bit going too far. <laughs> I just assume that the Java is there, but it must be the right version. Um, so I do a check on, on Java uh, version and that it must be Java 1.8. And now I have uh, 11, so that's not right. But if I type jenf, I think it will work. No, uh, oh, I must refresh my shell. I think that was it. So there is. So now I, I have 1.8. Now I can build. Uh, what was the command again? Build server. And now uh, we have built the server because the jar was already there. I didn't really need to build anything. So that's why it finished so quickly. But if I touch server source, some, some file here, so I touch the main file, then it should really build uh, the, uh, using lining and the, the jar. So you can see it takes a lot longer now. Um, so um, let's see. Yeah, it takes a while. So that's where the, the modified since version really comes in handy, I think. Uh, so we finally have this jar. And when I call this command again, it's really fast because we use this fs modified since function. Uh, so we have this build server now executed and um, we want to prepare this LSP jar so that just copies it. I can also EV LSP jar. So then it will first try to build the server but that already happened and now we have the LSP jar which is in, uh, where does it copy it? Minus jar in server targets. So server target. Uh, so now this is this is the jar that I'm going to upload to to GitHub releases eventually. I won't do that now because it's not really necessary. But so I think I have to, uh, you get the gist. Uh, so all these tasks are depend on each other. And when I make a new CLG Condo version, uh, I can just to BB publish and that's all I have to do to get all this going. Um, okay, let's see. Um, so that's one example. I won't show the other examples, but uh, uh, you, you, can, you can also visit the, the documentation on, uh, there is a site called book.babeshka.org uh, where this documentation is available. Uh, let's see. Um, so uh, everything that I told tonight and more details is available in this documentation. And here, are, here is a list of real world examples that you can take a look at. Um, so let's revisit what we started with. Uh, so Babeshka tasks, I think covers most of the things that people do with make files in their closure projects. But now we can do it using Clojure itself. Uh, and that is basically the, the, the entire idea of Babeshka. Use a tool that understands Clojure for scripting. Um, just one last message. Uh, you can um, uh, 
sponsor this project if you want uh, by going to GitHub sponsors. Uh, and I want to thank the companies that are sponsoring me to, to do this and also the individual sponsors uh, that you can see on this page. Um, okay, that was it. Uh, I'd be happy to take any questions. Uh, I'm sure there are a few, uh, but, uh, so let me know.